Native peoples all across the globe have been subject to the wishes and cultures of external groups and their causes. Impacts of missionaries, colonists, governments, and efforts towards modernization and development can easily be seen throughout indigenous populations or the locations in which populations used to reside. The colonists were often in pursuit of land, resources, and control. Governments and organizations working to develop land, gain resources, and modernize peoples or processes caused environmental devastation, inflicting toxins upon the natives and their space. Some native groups have been successful in adjusting to these forces, yet communities and their views remain irreversibly altered. The aboriginals of Australia were faced with colonists, and the offshore of the Amazon and the Son of Africa with modernization. To explain the Australian aboriginals, the National Geographic told the story of Batumbo, an old woman who lives in Arnhem Land. This is a territory in Australia that was claimed by settlers throughout the last few hundred years and finally returned to Aboriginal Australians in 1976. Batumbul explained how her community had been devastated by the rise in new products such as alcohol, tobacco, gasoline, and refined foods. The article author, Michael Finkel, elaborated that Aboriginals were expected impossibly to convert virtually overnight. Untempered consumption plus unlimited supply of a product like alcohol equals disaster. Same with processed sugars. Obesity and diabetes are prevalent among aboriginals. Also tobacco. Gasoline sniffing got so bad that a special brand of low aromatic, non-addictive fuel called opal is all that's sold in some aboriginal areas. This concept is common in most instances of explorers coming to live in new land. Especially with European settlers, resources, lifestyles, and illnesses were brought to the native peoples. Such things had never been introduced or explained, and therefore had devastating impacts. As according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, growing humanitarian concerns and reactions to frontier excesses led the Australian colonies to pass laws beginning in 1856 in Victoria, concerning the care and protection of Aboriginal peoples. They were put into reserves and given food and clothing to soothe the dying pillow, as they awaited what the Europeans took to be cultural extinction. In 1886, the ruling government in Australia passed an Aboriginal Protection Act. It was said to be of help to the Indigenous peoples, but the truth is that the government wanted natives to live in a more developed Western manner. New settlers believed that Aboriginals were incapable of properly educating and caring for youth. Both of these things prompted the act, which allowed Aboriginal children to be taken from their loving families and forced into boarding schools so that they would adopt the ways of white society. In 1856, with respect to Australian Aboriginals, English-Australian journalist Edward Wilson said, in less than 20 years, we have nearly swept them off the face of the earth. We have shot them down like dogs. In the guise of friendship, we have issued corrosive sublimate in their damper and consigned whole tribes to the agonies of an excruciating death. We have made them drunkards and infected them with the diseases which have rotted the bones of their adults and made such few children as are born amongst them a sorrow and a torture from the very instant of their birth. We have made them outcasts on their own land, and are rapidly consigning them to an entire annihilation. As for the Ashwar, in the Amazon, mass deforestation and resource extraction has taken place. Companies from all over the world have sent workers there to collect minerals, lumber, and resources like rubber. This means that the indigenous peoples of all nearby areas have seen the implications of the environment being depleted and abused. Health has decreased rapidly due to the tainted environment, illnesses of foreign peoples, and lifestyles of other cultures that have been brought by the workers. According to an article from the publication of environmental research letters about Ashwar peoples and the destruction of the Peruvian Amazon, petroleum operations have had direct and indirect impacts on Ashwar health, both through exposure to toxic substances or as a result of malnutrition associated with the reduction in animal populations available to hunt and fish, caused by contamination or overexploitation of limited forest resources. As of 2004, amongst all of the other environmental destruction, 
36 contaminants were above legal levels. Also, there are record high levels for most heavy metals, lethal for the natives and the contaminated resources they inadvertently use. Native communities across the Amazon have been pushed towards other lifestyles and away from their beloved traditional values. Ancient wisdoms and customs may never be restored due to the impacts of other countries and their efforts towards development through amassing foreign resources. In regards to the San, also called the Bushmen, Roy Sasana, or Toby as in his native language, is a Bushman from the part of the Kalahari Desert now a part of Botswana, Africa. In his acceptance speech for the Right Livelihood Award, Toby explains the ways and wisdoms of his traditional peoples. He describes his knowledge that, while vastly different from our own, should be respected as equal and valuable. Just because native peoples aren't always versed in literature doesn't mean that they are primal. Where we have an intricate understanding of technology, they have an incredible and invaluable understanding of the environment and the interactions within it. Our perspectives on the world are just different, neither better than the other. As Toby said, we are not primitive. To you, we live differently, but we do not live exactly like our grandparents did, nor do you. Were your ancestors primitive? I don't think so. We respect our ancestors. We love our children. This is the same for all people. Toby also described the sad state of his peoples in respect to their relation with the government. Due to the diamonds found on their designated native land, Toby and all others were forced to move. Their ways of life were shaken and damaged irreversibly. In Toby's speech was, Why am I here? Because my people love their land, and without it we are dying. Many years ago, the president of Botswana said that we could live on our ancestral land forever. But the next president said that we must move and began forcing us away. They said we had to move so the government could develop us. The president says unless we change, we will perish like the dodo. I didn't know what a dodo was, but I found out. It was a bird which was wiped out by settlers. The president was right. They are killing us by forcing us off our land. We have been tortured and shot at. They arrested me and beat me. Unfortunately, the same disrespect, violence, and misunderstanding is true for countless indigenous Bushmen. They are poorly treated and their tribulations only continue. Now here are some takeaways. By reviewing what has occurred across the world between various native and external cultures, we can glean invaluable lessons of how to shift our values and perspectives in order to avoid repeating negative patterns. Such lessons can also promote respect for others and an increased awareness of ourselves and our interactions. Every culture has its own knowledge and values. Natives have an incredibly thorough understanding of nature, their community, and their environment. Just because they do not have the practices or understandings of developed Western areas doesn't mean they're primal or any less human. Their ways and wisdoms have withstood the test of time and are worth considering. No views are superior. Just because a perspective, practice, or culture is thought to be ideal does not mean that it is okay to assimilate the ways of others and destroy their landscapes in favor of that. Groups that traveled to native lands often sought to increase their power through dominating new peoples or claiming territory. However, power nor force should be exerted over other groups or individuals, as power and security can easily be obtained through other, more constructive means. Humans need to consider how they are impacting others and their environments. Moral and ethical considerations should be in place when reaching out to uncontacted or indigenous groups. Governments need to consider the impact and long-term effects of their actions. For example, the extraction of resources often disrupts the lives of natives and is toxic to the environment and ecosystem. We can share the earth and, with smarter forms of modernization, design and implement renewable practices so as to eliminate the need to further alter the landscape. Avoiding the use of propaganda and manipulation to force opinions upon others will allow for a variety of beliefs to be held. Equality is critical for human interaction. No matter the lifestyle or race of people, everyone should be treated fairly. 
This means that we must respect the traditional peoples of the land. Be okay with others having different views. Respect the views as different and know that such notions are serving a purpose for whoever holds them. If others are ready for or wanting new views, the change will come. Allow them to reach out in their own time. Going forward, organizations seeking to contact Native groups should come to an understanding of Native groups before acting, jumping to conclusions, or creating stereotypes. Make sure the ways of Natives are known before trying to help them. Helpful actions and efforts to some are not helpful to all. Recognize that the wishes of those Natives are not identical to those of Western or developed areas. Be cognizant that the growth of governments, economies, societies, and technologies are not often wanted by the natives. Forcing others to partake in new lifestyles is not helpful if they are content with what they already have and do. Approach native groups with caution. Maintain distance unless welcomed and be peaceful. Avoid using weapons. View the peoples as equals and treat them with respect. Brief elders or leaders or groups about what teachings, resources, and practices could be offered or explained, making sure to give the choice to receive new cultures in their ways or religions. If the land or resources are needed, explain so in an honest and comprehensive way. These stories and experiences illustrate the unfortunate fates of these native groups. The lessons explained here will help us as a society to create new patterns to avoid enduring and causing such fates for others. By applying these insights, we will preserve the world's unique cultures and honor all people and places. Together, our communities will engage and exist peacefully, and we will preserve our environment for generations to come.